Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to lay your own composite decking onto an existing frame. I've recently built my own dream house. Now, it's quite an unusual size and shape. In fact, it's got 16 corners. So I've designed a decking frame that will go around almost half of the house. Now, whether you're designing, building your own house and garden, or just reconfiguring the landscape area, it's very important to get the aesthetics of the materials right. Now, I've got this lovely dark red brickwork here with a terracotta mortar in between. Right next to that, we've got the large aluminium bifold windows, which is an anthesanct grey. And then, of course, we've got the large planes of glass here, which is going to reflect what I put down on the surface. Now, I've chose the composite decking boards with this lovely wood grain effect, which I believe will complement the rest of the materials on this house. Now, a great thing about the composite decking is it looks so affected, it can be mistaken for real wood. It's got this lovely grain effect here. However, it's universal. The opposite side of it has the routed out grooves in there for the non-slip tread. So it's your choice which side you can actually lay. The lengths themselves come in 3.66 meters in length. They're 146 millimeters wide and 25 millimeters deep. I've chose to use the hollow plank. It's extremely strong, but very lightweight. And you can also get a solid plank as well. It's really easy to install on a standard wooden frame. Now, if you're having to construct your own frame for your decking, a couple of things you need to bear in mind. You have to use structural timber to a grade of C16. It has to be tallized or pressure treated. And when you're building the frame, the joists themselves have to be a maximum of 350 millimeters apart, center to center. And you also have to double the frame up where the planks actually meet together. But we'll show more about that when we're actually fitting the planks. But if you want to watch another step-by-step -step video of how to actually build the frame, please follow the link in the description. Now the frame is complete, you're ready to start fitting the planks. And it's very important where you fit the first plank because that dictates where the rest of the planks are going to be fitted. Now, I would always recommend starting up against the house wall or the garden wall and working your way out with the planks. You start off with a starter clip, just like this, it's stainless steel. Now, these are fitted at 350 millimeters apart, the width of your joists. I'm going to put a small packer about four to six millimeters away from the wall just to give me that little expansion gap. We'll screw them down. Again, with the stainless steel clips and screws. Taking the pack out, of course. Now, the first plank, I've got some offcuts here just to kind of show you how these work. So I've got them in along there. The first plank will hook into there, into the groove. You give it a gentle little tap with a rubber mallet. Now that back end now is hooked, it's anchored down to there. This front edge here, you take your second clip, and this is a kind of a double end one, it's pushed in. Sometimes you can push these in by hand. Sometimes you might have to give them a little bit of a, a knock in with, with a rubber mallet like this. So they get fitted again on every joist, 350 millimeters apart, and then your second plank, these are going to be screwed down, screwed in here to hold that first plank into place. And your second plank then just simply clips into position. Again, a gentle little tap with the rubber mallet, and that's leaving you the perfect expansion gap in between there, what the manufacturers recommend. And then the same applies to the rest of the boards. You push your clip in. Little gentle knock if they need it. And then the third plank will be in position. Screw down again, of course, and then that is in like this. But these are only off cuts, so I'm gonna start off with my full face length into position. I've got all my starter clips in all the way along the ledger beam. If you're a little bit unsure that your wall may not be quite straight, you can run a string line across them all the way through, just making sure that they're all in line. This plank is gonna start right on the end of my fence, all the way along to here. Pushing it in, making sure all my clips are fixed down and my packers are out the way. 
gently tapping that in with the rubber mallet. Perfect. Now, I can start to put my clips into position on every joist. Once I've got them in, all the way along the full length of the plank, I start to screw them down just the same using the stainless steel screws. As you can see, that plank now is down solid. You've got the hooks on the back, the starter clips holding it down, and then you've got this holding it down there. So again, we continue screwing that along every clip. So my first decking plank is firmly fixed down the full length of the house. It's got the starter clips on and the second clips screwed down into each joist. I'm ready for my second plank. So that's my second plank firmly fixed down with the brackets along the full length of the building. It's ready for the third plank. Now, if you've got a job as big as my one, it's always best to get an extra helping hand. John, another plank. Thank you. Now, cutting the individual planks is relatively easy. You can use a handsaw, but of course, if you've got hundreds of planks to fit, it's going to be a lot quicker by using some form of table saw, sliding saw, or a chop saw. But don't forget to use your dust mask and safety specs. As you can see, I'm creating a brickwork effect by staggering the joints of the planks. Wherever the joints meet, these must be sitting on two joists, leaving a 10 millimeter expansion gap. Well, that's perfect. I would always advise you, every about probably three courses, get yourself a string line and run it in from one end to the other. You can find that you've got a fraction of a pull just between them, especially in this warm weather, the boards tend to expand and detract. So always, Every three boards I run them in. I've done it on my third one and now I'm doing it on my sixth board. And I'll do the same again on the ninth board. And then if you have got a little bit of a defect in it, you can always pull them out or pull them in. It's only talking about a millimeter or two. But what you don't want to do is leave that bow in there because what will happen then, it'll start to get exaggerated the more and more boards you actually fit in place. So now we've got about six planks in here. We're just putting the seventh plank along. It's becoming a lot easier and quicker to work because of course I'm working on the platform. But when you're working actually off the frame, it can be a little bit tricky. I'd always advise good knee pads in there when you're actually working on there. But now we've got our boards in place, I can use these as a working platform and work along. There's many benefits for using composite board. Firstly, it's eco-friendly. It's slip and stain resistant and even splinter free. Whatever it throws at you, child's play, bicycles, barbecues, party goers, paddling pools and even garden furniture. It will withstand it all and keep its natural beauty. Now the width of the deck is complete. The length of it here, what I've done is I've overselled my planks. As you can see, they're all different lengths on there. And I'm just going to cut them off with one single cut with a plunge saw and a guide all the way across it so it's perfect. Now you quite often come across 
obstacles in the way that you're going to have to cut around them. For instance, downspouts, you know, on the corner of the building, it may go around a grid, it has to be cut out. Manholes, inspection chambers, all have to be cut around with the decking planks. And of course, you've got posts, your fence posts here. So simply just mark them up, scribe around them, and then you can cut them either with a handsaw if they're squared and straight cuts, or if they're caved, you're gonna to have to use a jigsaw. I prefer to use a jigsaw. It's always a lot quicker and easier. Now one side of my decking is now complete. I've laid 15 planks here. It's had the approval of Sydney the Bulldog sitting there. I've brought the planks all the way to the one edge and then I've used the clips to clip it in and fix it to the edge of the frame there. It anchors the edge bit down. The reason I've done that, I'm gonna have a complete flush garden where you can see this uh, kind of weeds here. These are gonna come up, topsoil is gonna to be laid and then when my lawn is laid, it'll be perfectly flush with the edge of my deck, making it nice and level all around. However, if you've got a step dropping down there and your garden is lower, you can use this particular plank where it's got a step edge on it. And that, of course, is fitted onto the edge of there, comes down the front of your frame, and then you can continue it with the same deck and board on the face if the step is necessary. Composite decking is made from a mixture of recycled wood and high-density polyurethane. This gives the best of both worlds in terms of aesthetics and performance. It looks great with the choice of finishes and colours. But unlike timber, it won't rot, swell, splinter or split and is designed to cope with the outdoor areas that are in use all summer and beyond. Scrubbing and staining your deck every year is a thing of the past with composite wood decking. The colour is also consistent through the entire core of the product. Clever Conceal Fixings gives a neat, flawless finish which can be installed quickly and easily, making composite wood the ideal decking choice. Now hopefully I've inspired you to build your own decked area around your house or even just replace them wooden planks. Not only will it look better, it will last longer. If you'd like to see some more how-to videos, please visit my website, craigphillips.co.uk and follow the link to the YouTube channels. Or if you want any more information on Eurocell's products or some technical advice on composite decking, please visit their website, eurocell.co.uk.